Concord Baptist Church Bible study on this Thursday night. Good to have Noah here tonight. Glad he came. Amen. Glad the rest of y'all showed back up too. Amen. Uh, well, even you, Derek. <laughs> All right, let's see. We'll get uh, Tommy to open his word of prayer. First, our Father, I want to thank you again for this day, Lord. Thank you, love and kindness, your mercy and grace. And Lord, just thank you for allowing us to come tonight, Lord, and to study your word. Lord, I just pray we come prepared to receive it. And Lord, I just pray for the ones that couldn't be here or are sick, ones that's in our church. Lord, I just pray you'll touch them, help them. Sister Linda, be with her, Brother Raj, and the rest of them, Lord. We'll be sure to give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In the holy precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 I guess Johnny didn't know because uh, he wasn't here. I don't know if he knew we were having this tonight or not. We didn't say anything. You didn't say it last night? Huh? I thought you didn't say it last night. No, no, excuse me. Because he was on it last night. No, yeah, I didn't. No, I don't remember. All right, Mr. Song Leader Tim. Yep. Were you and Vic singing tonight? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Noah, you sing? <laughs> yeah, you going to join him? You can invite Noah if he wants to sing. All right. You play a piano or anything? No, I wish. Well, good yeah, evening, good. Facebook <laughs> and audience. All right. Do we ain't got no music? Three, two, one. This is my father's world, and to my listening ears. All nature sings and round me ring the music of the spheres. This is my father's world. I rest me in thought of all thoughts and trees of skies and seas. His hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world. The birds that carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare the Maker's praise. This is my Father's world, He shines in all that's fair. In rustling grass I hear Him pass, He speaks to me everywhere. This is my father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is a ruler yet. This is my father's world. No matter is not done. Jesus who dies shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Everybody, right. All right, what hymn, which one are you doing in the hymn? I'm doing my dog. What do you got? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, amazing okay, grace. Amazing grace. What page number is it? 236. 236. Okay, 236. Yes, pretty sure. Oh my gosh. Yes, 236. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I scared myself. I got to ask somewhere. Yeah. Oh, stand yes, please stand to and open Amazing. your books to page 236. Amazing. I'm still new. Amazing Greece is what the Baptist said. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing Greece, yes. Baptists love greasy food. All right. Your cue, Maestro. Um.
First Peter chapter two, and then we're going back to Exodus chapter thirty-nine. How many people in here are priests tonight? Are you a priest? Yes, sir. Everyone that's saved is a priest. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm not talking about the guy that dresses like mama that wants to be called papa. <laughs> you stay away from him. Amen. You know what a monastery is? Do you use? Do you have any idea what a monastery is? The home for unwed fathers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's right. First Peter chapter two. In verse nine, the Bible says, Peter tells us, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. See, we have a priesthood. Most people don't realize that we're priests. But a royal priesthood, a kingly priesthood, amen, and holy nation, a peculiar people, and that is peculiar, Derek, not strange, okay, what am I amen, doing? I'm just saying, this. <laughs> but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness, into his marvelous light. So what priesthood are we in? It's the Melchizedek priesthood. That's the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he is God's eternal high priest. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was made a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All right. He's a king. And he's a priest. That's why we've been made kings and priests. All right. So we are, we have a holy priesthood, 
and our priesthood is after the order of Melchizedek. Anybody know what the Old Testament priesthood was for Israel? It was called the Levitical priesthood. And it was the tribe of Levi, and their job was to do this, to minister about the things of God, the tabernacle in the wilderness. Amen. And they had a priesthood. And over in Exodus in chapter 29, the Lord was giving them the things that they, to make the garments that the priest was to wear. So I wanted to go over that a little bit tonight because most people don't realize that they have a priesthood. And as a priest, you have duties. You have duties to pray, to win souls, amen, to bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ, to encourage them. So over in chapter 39, we'll start in verse 6, 39. In verse 6, it says, and they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold, graven as signets are graven, with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for a memorial to the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And he said he made a breastplate of cunning work. Now this is nothing like it. This is just a teaching tool. Amen. And he says, and he made the breastplate of cunning work like the work of an ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. Now the priest on his garments, that's, he wore this breastplate, and he bore the names of the tribes of Israel on that. And when he went in to minister in the temple, he had those that breastplate on. And it says it was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof and a span the breadth thereof being doubled. And they set in it four rows of stones. Four row, rows of stones. Amen. And he says the first row was a sardius a topaz, and a carbuncle. This was the first row. Verse 11, and the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. Now, I don't have these in order. I'm just reading them off to you. And the third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. And they were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. So these are the stones, 12 of them, and they were set in ouches of gold here. Amen. And he says in verse 14, And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, 12 according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name according to the 12 tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathing work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathing chains of gold in the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the two wreathing chains they fastened in the two ouches and put them on shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. So... They put this thing together. These are supposed to be up here, but they come off. And on the hem of the garment of the high priest, there was a bell and a pomegranate. When he went into the most holy place in here, they would ring like that. If he messed up, he died. All right? He couldn't even sweat. They had to have linen breeches. Amen. They had to, they had to do everything just right. God didn't play back then. Doesn't play now, really. <laughs> but uh, on each one of these stones, <clears throat> excuse me, was the name of the tribe of Israel. And that kept them on the breast of the priest. And he made intercession for them. 
But I want to look at it, the Melchizedek priesthood. So before we do that, I want to go back to Isaiah 14. We're going to see where Lucifer fell. Or up to Isaiah 14. We're already back. Something smells good. And it's not me. <laughs> Definitely not you. <laughs> I believe that too. <laughs> everything. Must be the chili that Victoria made. All right. Isaiah chapter 14 will begin in verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel to set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for, the, for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage, wherein thou hast, was made to serve. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. And say, how hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. Now, I, I wish I had the aquarium set up, and I think I'm going to do that in the next week or two. But if you look in the chart on the back of the room there, there's a like a globe. Now, that's a body. Of, the blue is a body of water. It's called the Great Deep. Above that is the throne of God in Mount Zion in the sides of the north, Psalm 48. The earth, the Bible from 2 Peter, is for this they are willingly ignorant of that the world of old sat in the water and out of the water, whereby the world that then was overflowed and perished. At that time, this is where this king of Babylon that we're reading about now with the golden city had ruled. Amen. Now, that's a lot to take in if you've never studied it before. So, But we'll go back over it in detail in later studies. He said, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and unhindered. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. And if you want to write a note down, if you go to Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 23, you'll see where the earth was void, but he said he would not make a full end. Amen. He said, yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, since thou art laid down, no fellers come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. And he's telling you who it is in this next verse. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Amen. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? See, Lucifer wasn't a bad name back then. Now, Lucifer was the, or was the anointed chair that covered. You can find uh, when Michael, the archangel, disputed with the devil about the body of Moses over in the book of Jude. He said he durst not break, bring a railing accusation against him. Why? Because at one time, Lucifer, the anointed cherub, was over Michael and Gabriel. And the Bible says that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So he still had the title of that office, even though he had fallen from that office. Now, this is a lot to take in tonight, so don't worry about it. I'm just trying to get to a point on the breastplate. In the NIV so-called Bible, which is the non-inspired version, Amen. Every Bible that says it's a Bible is not a Bible. 
words mean something. And we're commanded to keep every word of God. Well, how can we keep every word of God if we don't know which one is the word of God? Hey, you made it. Come on in. Hello, everybody. Hello. So, uh, in the NIV, which we have one over there in our biohazard uh, bookshelf, calls him the morning star. Over in Revelation 22, Jesus Christ is given an invitation in the King James Bible that the bright and the morning star. So if the NIV is true, then you either have the devil giving you an invitation to be saved or you have Jesus fallen from heaven. That's blasphemy. Amen. When these people come in and try to change the Bible, they think they're being smart. I, when I was in England, a man told me, I, I mean, this, where was King James Bible printed? In England. Amen. And I've talked to this fella and I said, he told me that the, the NIV was easier to understand. Now, it's written on a 12th grade level. The King James Bible was written on a sixth grade level. Well, that was back when I was growing up. Now it's college level. And <laughs> I'll take the sixth grade level. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I told him, I said, does this say what I, he says, well, but in the originals, I said, do you have the originals? And if you had the originals, could you read the originals? Are you fluid in Hebrew and Greek? See, we got these little professors running around that go to Bible college for four years and think they're Greek scholars. Amen. A mother of a friend of our pastor, my old pastor, the one that passed, is gone, Brother Randall. She lives in Greece. And you know how our, our language has deteriorated? If I was to tell you tonight that I'm gay, what would you think? When I was growing up, it meant you were happy. If you were what? Happy. It meant I was happy. If he was gay. The word gay. Sure. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean that today in America no. or anywhere else, just about. So what happened? The English language was degenerating. So that's what happened to the Hebrew. And the woman said, if you had the old Hebrew, said most of the people in Greece couldn't understand it. So... The point I'm making here tonight is that this is Lucifer, and I want you to see what it says about him. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? What nations? What nations? You see, when when we meet him in the garden, he's already a fallen uh, fallen uh, serpent. Hey, Amen. He's already fallen. There were no nations then when we met him in the Garden of Eden. At that time. So they had to be pre-Adam. That's where you get the doctrine of the pre-Adamic earth. Have these folks been through the pre-Adamic earth yet? No, we're going to okay. we're gonna set those uh, up. Very good. But he says, For thou was set in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. <laughs> I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, Psalm 48. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider it, saying, Is this that the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake kingdoms, that made the worlds as a wilderness? And, dest and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. What did he say? That destroyed what? The cities thereof. He hasn't destroyed the cities thereof since we met him in the garden. These were pre-Adamic, pre-Adam. That's why he told Adam to go and what? Replenish, replenish the earth. Genesis 128. Go and replenish the earth. 
replenish it from what? What was there before? Same thing he told Noah Amen. in chapter 9. Go and replenish the earth. You see what these Bible correctors do when everybody thinks they're smarter than God is they come in and change that and say fill and multiply. It means fill and multiply. Well, they're not even spelt the same. <laughs> you can't spell, can't you? He said, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden underfoot. Now, let's go over to Ezekiel, or, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 28. How many stones were there in the Levitical priesthood? Twelve. There's 12 tribes. There's 12 stones. Each one had a name on it, and they were set in gold. So let's read this. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Now who said that? We just read it in Isaiah chapter 14. Lucifer. Yet thou art a man and not God. Do you know? How many here know that angels are not women? Amen. They're what? Men. They're called men. So he says, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. We know that that was Lucifer in Isaiah chapter 14. Now, you have to understand that Scripture has two and three applications, amen? Historical and prophetic and had, has a double meaning, too. Did David ever go to hell? Yet in the Psalms, it says that his soul was not left in hell. So what was that? That was a prophecy of David speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ suffering in hell. Amen? Amen? He says, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? <clears throat> but thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him. That slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now look at this. When he showed up to Adam, what was he? A serpent. Huh? A serpent. A serpent mm -hmm. with legs. You see, when he first got there, he come walking in, you know, like this. Hey, baby, you looking good today, mama. <laughs> <laughs> and with his subtlety, he deceived Eve into taking the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And she took and did eat and gave him to her husband. And he did eat. Then what happened to the serpent? He was made to eat dust. How was that? Took his legs. Made him crawl like a worm. Amen. Now, verse 13 says, Thou hast been an eat in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Look at it. Sound familiar? The sardius, topaz, the diamond the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, 
the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship, amen, and gold, gold. Count how many stones are there. I'll read them to you again. The sardis, topaz, the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle. If you put up both hands and take one finger down, you'll have the answer. Nine. Nine stones. And gold. What was the gold for? It set the stones in. All right. Now, what people don't realize is that Lucifer was religious. Look here. Thou, he says, the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Tablets and pipes. You know what tablets are? Drums. You know what pipes are? Organ. All right. He was a built-in musician. That's why a lot of this liberal stuff today, you've got so-called Christian rock, soft rock, rocking with the rock. <laughs> Amen. It's straight out of hell. They take a few songs and just change the lyrics to it. He was a musician. Remember Striper? Anybody remember that? That was in my day. Well, yeah. That really glorified God. That honored God, didn't it? Huh? You see, people don't think for themselves. They get caught up in a group and they follow it without thinking for themselves, without studying for themselves. We're saying, what does the scripture say about this? I'm not asking you to trust me or believe me. I'm just asking you to take what I say and read it for yourself. Amen. Amen. Yellow and black striped leotard pants. And I'm sure if you Google it, you could probably see them. Yeah. But here's what he here's what he says. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. He's the anointed cherub that covereth. He tells you who he is. And I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down. In the midst of the stones of fire, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. And thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I will cast thee to the ground I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee look at this verse 18 you got verse 18 what does it say thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee and it shall devour thee and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee thou shalt be a terror and never shalt thou be any more all right so he was religious you remember in the book of Psalm where Jesus said if it had been an enemy he could have borne it but it was thou my old familiar friend mine equal we went to the house of God together. Under Christ, he ruled that body of, uh, called earth that sat in the water and out of the water before Adam. And see, this is what got him. He was so lifted up with pride. And when it was all over, God recreated. Amen. And he took the dust of the earth and made a man and gave him everything that Lucifer once had. And then he came in and deceived Eve. And he got it back. That's why he's called the prince of power there. So. 
He was part of the Melchizedek priesthood. He operated in his sanctuaries. Now we just, how do you know he was part of the priesthood? How many stones did we count? Nine. Nine stones in the book of Ezekiel. He said he defiled his sanctuary. You see these stones? There's nine of those here from the 12 that we have over here. Amen. Now, I started out by saying we had a priesthood. First Peter chapter 2. But look at Galatians 5. Now, if the Holy Ghost is Melchizedek, and that's our... And that's the priest of the Most High God. Hold your place in Galatians 5 and real quick turn back to Hebrews. In chapter 5 of Hebrews. Now. You Bible scholars, where did Moses get the pattern for this? Huh? You're not interested? Huh? I'm going to tell you what, you talk about a message that I messed the devil up, that I, that I aggravate the devil, this is a message that I aggravate the devil. He got that from the mount, patterned after the one in heaven. So if there's one in heaven... Guess what? There's a priesthood. You know why the devil hates this message? Because it shows his downfall. It gets to his pride. He had all that. He was decked out in that. He had everything here that we read about. Now he's a serpent. And you know why he hates you so bad? You know why he wants to destroy your life? He'll let you have all the religion you want. Amen. He'll let you have all the religion you want. As long as you don't get saved. Amen. He wants to destroy you because God gave us what he once had, only he gave it to us in a kingdom called the kingdom of God that cometh not with observation, but is within you. And he can't get it back. And we can't lose it. He said we're sealed into the day of redemption by that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. That's why he hates this so bad. Most of your scholars, they don't even know about it. When there's evidence all the way through here, the great Christian university over in Columbia. I think it's called Columbia International University now. It used to be called something else. Columbia Bible. Yeah, Columbia Bible. Years ago, I got into it with their professors over there. They called me up because we were on the street passing out tracts, talking to their people. And they called me up and wanted to argue. They couldn't refute it. Well, but in the originals, do you have an original? Can you read it? There are none. You want an original, get you a book, a real one. Hey. Amen. That's an original. God gave it to us in English so we wouldn't have to. Uh, I mean, if you go back and read the translators to the readers, the reason they prayed that God would open the king of England's eyes so that we could have it in a language that we could read and understand is to get you out from under the superstition of the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Because if you didn't know Latin, you had to go to them to find out what it said. Guess who people think they got to go to now? They got to go to a Hebrew and a Greek scholar. That means you're too stupid to understand sixth grade English.
they go to the back of the Strong's Concordance to the Hebrew and Greek dictionary and pull out a word and, and use it and try to sound like they're intelligent. They've been educated beyond their intelligence. Now, in Hebrews in chapter 5, in verse 9, it says, And being made perfect, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now look at this, verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say. Who's the of whom there? The of whom there is Melchizedek. He says, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you were dull of hearing. For when the time ought to be time, you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteous for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even though who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, Galatians chapter 5, and I'm done. You can be relieved as soon as I'm finished. Right here. Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Now, in verse 22, Galatians 5, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit. Now, who is the Spirit? God's the spirit, but he's God, the Holy Ghost. And his name as a priest is Melchizedek. Now, but the, so if there's a Melchizedek priesthood, and this Levitical priesthood here was patterned after the one in heaven, guess what? They had to have a breastplate too. So here's the breastplate. For the Melchizedek priesthood. Now, you've been made a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek too. Amen. Yes, sir. So, what should you have on your breastplate? The fruit of the Spirit. Amen. What's it say? Count them. Love, Love joy, joy, peace. peace. How many is that? Three. Three. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, six, six, six. faith, meekness, Temperance. Eight, eight, nine. 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 Against such there is no law. <laughs> Amen. Against such there is no law. So you and I as spirit filled Christians. Operating in the priesthood that Peter says that we've been made royal priesthood. We ought to be manifesting the fruit of the spirit. And this is the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Amen. That's our breastplate in type. <laughs> Amen. How many of you are? Well, you couldn't really be operating in that priesthood if you didn't know anything about that priesthood, could you? But now that you know about it, it's your duty and obligation to go and study it for yourself. Now, Lord willing, I don't know if I'm going to do it in a Sunday service. Or if we'll do it in a Thursday service. But in the near future, we'll set up the aquariums, the models with the pre-Adamic earth. Don't miss this. That will give you a better understanding of what we said tonight. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it gives you an answer to how fossils got there. You see. No, asteroids. Oh my you see, here's what people understand. The evolutionists say that the earth is millions of years old. The Christians say it's 6,000 years old. Nah. So who's right? Both of them. Both. Both. Both are right. You see, we don't know how many millions of years it was here before Lucifer fell. But we know it's been 6,000 years since Adam. 
And we're looking for the millennial reign of Christ, which is a thousand years, which would be our seventh day. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Amen. If you ever learn this, you'll know more than the school teachers at the university. <laughs> you'll understand why there's ice on Mars. Probably other planets too. Do you know that when they went to set the 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 uh, spaceship on the moon, when they were getting ready to do that, they were calculating the figures. It was said that they just couldn't figure something out. It just wasn't coming out. And one of them there was a Christian and said, well, you know, there was a day that the earth stood still. They went and figured that out in their calculations and put the ship on the moon. You know what else? If you, How many ever seen the picture of the spaceship that landed on the moon? You ever seen a picture of it? I have. But All right. What did it have on the bottom of that rocket? Legs. Big, long legs. Do you know why? Because they thought that the moon was as old as the original Earth. They thought they were going to sit down in cosmic dust. But when they got there, it barely had a dusting. If people would just believe the Bible and take it for what it says, they'd have more answers to life than they could understand. You have the joy of the Lord, peace in your heart and soul. That's why whatever's going on in this country, we're not worried about it because I know whom I believe in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. One day I'm going to get, not only am I going to get to see those planets, I'm going right on by them. <laughs> and then I'm going through a body of water called the Great Deep, which is above it. And I'm going to see that beautiful city on the other side. And then anything I think will be right. I won't have to worry about the things that come out of my mouth because it'll be right. I'll have a new and glorified body. I won't be able to joke no more. Listen, this is not a fairy tale. This is real. And you can't trust WikiLeaks and Google and all that other garbage on there to give you the true facts of the scripture. If they really believed it and had the true facts, they'd be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, I'm done. Aren't you glad? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I answered. <laughs> All right. How about this, Mrs. In Prayer there, Dale? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this evening for a beautiful Thursday evening. Lord, we give thanks for everybody making it here safely and Look over us as we go back to our homes tonight. Lord, just bless this food which we are about to partake. Let it give us the strength and fortitude to go forth and do thy bidding as we go forth into the world. Bless this country, Lord. Uh, we need all we can get. And Lord, we sure hope that, that you will look down and bless everything that we do, that it be pleasing in your sight. And thank you, Lord, most importantly, for sending your precious Son to be our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.